Hey everyone, I'd like to welcome you to this second video in this sponsored series in partnership with JetBrains by Sea Lion. This video is going to be talking about one of my favorite features in Sea Lion, which is their native CMake support. This is a huge workflow improvement for me, and I'm going to show you three reasons why I love using CMake and Sea Lion together. By the way, if you have questions about Sea Lion, there's an opportunity to ask the team. They'll be hosting a Q&A session on Reddit on the 29th of October from 1 to 5 p.m. CET. If you're curious about their 2024.2 release, their 2024.3 roadmap, Sea Lion Nova, or anything else, this is a great time to ask them and we don't want you to miss out. I've put the link in the description below to find out more. So before we get started on these three amazing tips on using CMake and CLine together, here's a quick video from our sponsor. Okay, so here we are in C-Lion, and the first thing that I want to show you is how well C-Lion and C-Make integrate with each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a uh, directory here, and if I navigate to a project, what you'll see is that here we are in a project. It doesn't have a build folder yet, and I have this C-Make list.txt, uh, and uh, normally what you would need to do is you would need to go into your command line and you would need to do a build command in order to create your builds folder. But what you'll see here is with CLine is that it already just configures and opens up your project without even needing to do that build command. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go open as project. And now I'm in here. And what you've seen is that it already starts triggering a CMake build here. So uh, down here in the bottom, there's actually a dedicated CMake section, and I'll show you how to do that. And right now it's just running this build, and we can see that it's throwing all of this in this CMake build debug folder. Um, and I'm just gonna come down here, click on the CMake file itself, and we can see the CMake file itself right here in the window. So this is really cool because you don't have to go back and forth between your command line and possibly a text editor and your IDE. Everything is within the same window. I find that to be really convenient. Uh, and so as we can see, uh, it's gone ahead and it's pulled everything that it needed to pull from other repositories and the build has successfully finished. So like I was saying before, there's this dedicated section for CMake down here in the bottom left that you can click on. And if I wanted to re-trigger that build, I could just do that with the click of one button right here. Just hit the recycle sign there and it re-triggers the build. And you can actually also go in and also set it to re-trigger a, uh, a build whenever you modify the, uh, the CMake list. So you don't have to run that manually. You can have it trigger whenever you, uh, you make a significant change to the file itself. And the way that you would do that is you could go down here to the bottom of these selections here and um, click into CMake settings. And here you actually have a selection of, uh, of helpful options here. So as I was saying before, I have mine uh, to set to reload the CMake project on editing the CMake list.txt itself. So some people find that irritating. I find it actually to be very helpful. Uh, here is the section where you would actually create other build configurations. So right now I only have one build configuration for this project, which is debug. And uh, in here, what I could do is I could use different tool chains and I could use different generators. So right now I'm using the Ninja generator, but if I wanted to switch that to the Xcode generator, or if I wanted to build a, a second debug configuration that was using Xcode as a generator, I could also do that here. Uh, if I wanted to add some additional CMake options, I could just do that here in this section. And then I would just hit OK. And then, um, and then you're, you're good to go there. Another thing that you could do is you could actually just um, reset the cache as well. So for 
many of you that, that know that if you make a whole bunch of changes in your uh, in your CMake file, that sometimes what you got to do is reset the cache. That's another place where you could do that. So I could hit reset cache and reload the whole project and it will do it like that. So you can see this integration is very tight between IDE, um, the stuff that you would normally see in the command line where you're actually doing your builds and uh, the CMake list uh, .txt itself. So uh, this integration is very tight. It saves me a lot of time. The second thing that I love about CMake and CLine is that CMake documentation is actually built directly into the CMake file. So, uh, so you have where you can actually hover over the different syntax of uh, the CMake file and you can actually see uh, what the official CMake documentation says. I think that this is really helpful, especially for myself as a person who is not the best person with build systems. Uh, you can actually go and, and hover over these things. You can actually even hover over keywords like Apple. So let me hover over that. And you can see um, that that's a CMake keyword as well. And so the ability to, uh, to do that, and also you have autocomplete as well. So if I just go here and I hit set, now you can see that there are a whole bunch of options here uh, from the uh, from the CMake um, language, if you would call it a language, uh, a scripting language, I guess you would call it. So um, so what you have is autocomplete here, um, and that is really nice as well for uh, creating your CMake file. That's something that you don't normally get with a text editor in my experience. So I love that integration of the CMake documentation and autocomplete with CMake files. The third feature that I'm going to talk about is actually my favorite, which is that CLion actually offers the ability to be able to debug CMake files within CLion, which is really awesome. So uh, before, when you were using the terminal to be able to invoke your CMake and then you would get an error, then you need to come back and you, then you need to go back and forth. Um, well, here you can actually um, debug these the way that you would with a normal source file. The way that you would do that is you could actually set a breakpoint in here. So let's go ahead and set a breakpoint here. And then what I will do is I will just hit this little play arrow here at the very top of the CMake file. And then I'll hit run uh, or debug scratch champion. And then what we can see here is down here at the very bottom, we have something that if you've uh, stepped through code before, you, this should look very familiar. So you can actually see your, uh, your different variables here in your current source directory uh, and CMake standard and so on. So here uh, it would step through an if statement the same way that it would step through if you were just working with regular code. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit step over. And we can see here that very nicely in line, it shows that Apple is one. So that's going to go true. So it's going to go inside this block here. And then it'll skip over everything else. And then if we go here a little bit further, then we will see that uh, we have this uh, if the CPM download location does not exist. Um, so it should skip over this block because we already have CPM um, downloaded. And we see that, that it skips over there. So it's a very intuitive way to see what's going on with your CMake code, especially if you're uh, having some issues um, figuring out um, if your directories are right and so on. So I really love this ability to be able to step through and um, set breakpoints within your CMake file. Very valuable for your workflow. Another thing that I didn't mention already that you could already see is that there are syntax highlighting. So right here you can see uh, that it looks really nice and pretty so you can see what's happening. Also, if your syntax is wrong, so I'll just do something wrong here, you'll see that it lets you know that you're doing something that you're not supposed to be doing. So the syntax highlighting is also very key here for using CMake and CLine together. Well, there you have it. And as you can see, JetBrains have done a fantastic job of integrating the CMake workflow into CLine to keep everything streamlined and to keep you working uh, so that you aren't going back and forth between different windows. It keeps everything nice and tight. 
in one window. If you'd like to find out some more about Scene Line and you're curious to, uh, to see what Scene Line is all about, be sure to check the link in the description below. Until then, happy coding and I'll see you next time.